Welcome back to Most Amazing. You wanted more deadly substances? You got it. Here are the top 10 deadliest substances that are hidden in plain sight. Let's do it. Kicking off the list at number 10, formaldehyde. You may have heard this one before at one point or another, but formaldehyde is all over your house. Spoiler alert. You might just not know it. It's commonly found in cleaning products, lotions, cosmetics, lots of shampoos, definitely a lot of shampoos. Next time your phone's dead and you catch yourself reading the back of those labels and you're doing one of these, keep an eye open for this one. Formaldehyde is a strong smelling colorless gas, also commonly found in building materials. So it's in there, which is here, and also over there. Not great, don't breathe that in. It's literally in your home, you can find this stuff. It's in plywood, glues. Formaldehyde is also found in tobacco smoke. So next time you're breathing in that secondhand smoke, remember that and be like, sorry guys, <coughs> I don't smoke. You don't, you don't have to do it like that sassy, but you know, just let them know. A study found that higher levels of formaldehyde are bound to the DNA in white blood cells if you do smoke. So if you need another reason to quit, there it is. Number nine, flame retardants. The less house fires we have, the better, right? That's where flame retardants come in. They are these chemicals added to furniture so that if a fire were to start, it wouldn't act as fabulous flint. Instead, these retardants are added to slow it down. You can't drop a lit cigarette on your couch and then 34 seconds later, you don't have a home anymore. You can't be doing that, all because you nodded off. No way. Since the 70s, these were added to furniture and you can find it now in mattresses, couches, blinds, curtains, carpets, anything that looks cozy, essentially, odds are it's very flammable. While it's great that we're not starting fires as much, we're still hurting the environment now. Many flame retardants have been removed from the process because they don't break down after their initial use. These chemicals can build up in people or animals over time. It's not good, you don't want any of that here. Number eight, chloroform. This one we've heard about also in one way or another, we've seen it in movies and stuff. Chloroform, if you inhale this, you're going to sleep quite fast, it's no good. Is chloroform out there just hidden in plain sight? I included it in this list, this is kind of concerning. Well, according to the EPA, yes, chloroform is out there all around us, but don't worry about getting knocked out on your way to work, it's not that strong. Chloroform is often released into the air through bodies of water. It's the chlorination of wastewater, pools, and breathing it in can lead to liver problems. Chloroform is created when chlorine mixes with organic compounds. Back in 2002, there was a study done to measure the levels of chloroform in public swimming pools, and there was enough of the chemical to link to miscarriages. Yeah, not great. Number seven, non-ill phenols. Remember the Tide Pod challenge when you know we had to launch a global campaign to get adults not to chew on laundry detergents? That was a good time, that was classic. Don't do that. If you're thinking about it and you've ever thought about it, don't. I don't know if what you need to see don't ever do that. Well, those common deadly substances, as we all learned about via Twitter, was non-ilphenols. They're more often than not found in laundry detergent or other hygiene products that we don't eat. Don't eat any hygiene products, period. The EPA has discovered that this chemical can lead to reproductive problems in rodents. A huge concern for the release of these chemicals is also in the aquatic system. NP, its shorter name, which I should have brought up at the beginning of this point, has also been detected in human breast milk, urine, and blood. Number six, triclosan. Now we gotta worry about toothpaste harming us. Come on, that's not cool. Brushing is more fun than ever these days with the whole you know, charcoal toothpaste. What a time to be alive. We love trendy mouth care. The antimicrobial chemical triclosan has been banned by the FDA, and it's an ingredient often added to consumer products in order to reduce bacterial contamination. And it was often found in soaps, body washes, cosmetics, and toothpaste. Now it's been removed from most of the stuff, but in a 2017 study by the journal Environmental Science and Technology, triclosan can build up over time on your toothbrush. You know, while sitting in that dirty SpongeBob SquarePants coffee mug that you've had for 17 years. Yeah, give it a rinse, maybe. It builds up and over time it can absorb into your bloodstream every time you brush, putting your gut and hormones at risk. It's actually highly toxic to fish, even though Canada's federal health and environment ministries say that it's safe for humans. It's not great. Aquatic organisms are at risk here. Stop. I'm like, stop brushing your teeth? I don't know the solution here. I don't know that much. I can tell you what it is, but I don't know the solution. Comment down below. Number five, DEET. Being a Canadian, I'm forced into the outdoors a lot. Friends with cottages always want to go up, and I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. I'll stay in the water the entire time or inside. Yeah, I'll just beat them and be like, I'm not going outside. I'm a Sudoku guy now. Just to avoid mosquitoes. I don't like it. I can't do it. And I know I'm not alone here. I just hold on to the bug spray the entire time of the entire trip. That ingredient used to keep those pests away is called DEET. Now, on one hand, it wards away whatever's trying to take a bite from you, but on the other hand, literally, if you use enough of it, you'll develop rashes. DEET toxicity isn't common 
It usually happens when you fool around with this kind of stuff. Spray it into your mouth or your eyes and stuff like that. Enjoy the outdoors, I guess, but do so responsibly. Also, if you go outside and you like outside, just stop. Be inside, play video games, be a hermit. It's too cold out there. I don't like it. Number four, poison ivy. They always say leaves of three, let them be, but you know what I say, if you're not sure, don't touch anything in the world ever. That's my rule, you can follow that. It doesn't rhyme yet, but we'll work on it. Poison ivy is found all over the United States, more commonly in the Eastern states. And we of course have lots up here in Canada. I've been a victim to poison ivy before. I'll tell you, it only takes one time. The itchy rash that you get after you touch that part of the plant is caused by urushi oil. Now this oily resin is stored in the leaves. Now one time, my friend put that leaf and rubbed it all over his face because it was like a hairy leaf and he was intrigued by this. He was like, oh, it's soft, so I'm gonna do this. Yeah, he went to the emergency. His face was didn't look great. Scariest thing I've ever seen. Don't touch poison ivy. Also, don't inhale smoke from this plant too. If you're thinking about burning it, and maybe that'll solve the problem, sure, but just plug your nose and run far away. Also, don't light any fires, please. Thanks. Number three, holly. Tis the season. Okay, let's talk about it. When I hear about holly or jolly and or holly and jolly, I think of something delicious, right? All the songs, it's like I have a holly jolly Christmas. It's like, mmm, yummy. These are not delicious. If you're seeing red looking berries anywhere, just don't eat them. The American holly is pretty common. It's actually now an ornament for the holidays. The American holly, AKA the Ilex opaca, is a tasty treat for birds, but if you see them eating these berries, don't copy them. They can eat poison pellets all day long and be fine. They can fly. Can we fly? No, don't eat berries. If we ingest holly, we're welcoming an alarming amount of toxins. One being illicin, which is a good way of you know vomiting and having nausea and all that nasty normal stuff. Now normally I wouldn't include holly on a list like this because it's not too bad or common, but like I said, tis the season. Number two, asbestos. Have you ever made the leap of faith and explored your own attic? You get the broom and push it up and you're like, I know it, there's ghosts in there, I feel it, I hear them at night. It's usually creepy, Dark, cold, and boring. It's just a wall of pink fluff, usually pink insulation. Asbestos is a natural mineral made of these thin fibers, and its primary use was for fireproofing, and its origins and use date back to the first century. It was used mainly as an insulator, and due to its fibers being so fine and heat resistant, that's why it looks all fluffy, it could be added to cement, paper, or cloth, you name it, in order to make them more durable. Its dangers weren't widely known until the late 80s, that's when the EPA banned the use of asbestos. That's because if you breathe it in, you're getting lung cancer. Essentially, not all the time, but you're definitely opening the door to lots of lung cancer. Houses built before the 80s have a higher chance of exposure to asbestos hiding in your walls, and most importantly, your insulation. It's a rare type specifically due to asbestos insulation called mesothelomia. More than 39,000 Americans lost their lives a year because of asbestos related disease, so it's pretty common. Also, another reason to not go in your attic. There you go, you can tell them I sent you. Number one, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte. What is arsenic and why have we heard of this before? It's incredibly toxic in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it causes these contaminated waters, which leads to arsenic poisoning. That's how it happens, it comes from the ground. So most of the time, what you're getting out of this whole deal is skin cancer. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams, so the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances. It's a Dog. Exposure to toxic metals is still a common problem that we're facing today. You can find arsenic in seafood, rice, or cereal now. So keep your eye open. Yeah, you'd think finding shrimp tails in your cereal is horrible enough. Now we gotta worry about arsenic. It comes naturally from water, soil, and bedrock, most commonly in the Midwest, United States, and areas of Texas. And at one point in time, they used to make arsenic dresses. It was like green colored dresses. It was really flammable, and it was green, and it just was all bad. If you inhaled it, you were just getting poisoned. You'd foam at the mouth, your eyes would turn green. It was bad. Arsenic, terrible. And before we wrap up this video today, we're gonna read some comments from ancient curses you don't wanna get. First comment comes from Boss Nina Gonzalez. She said, the way he does his reports, I love it. Yeah, honestly, whenever I talk about darker stuff like this, like poisons and arsenic or like world wars, I also get like kind of in like a silly mood because it's a serious topic and I don't want to, I don't know, I'm just silly and I don't like to talk about serious stuff. So I'm like, yeah, arsenic. Stupid, I'm stupid, I don't know, I have fun. Nicole Flanagan says, I just watched the movie La Llorona and it was pretty scary, but at the same time really sad and heartbreaking. I was kind of having a low-key panic attack the entire movie. It was a weird sensation, but it was a good movie. Yeah, I can't watch scary movies. I, uh, I get too angsty, too panicky. The back of the couch too, I don't have like a wall behind my couch, it's just like an open area. So I always feel like some guy's gonna go like, hmm, and like choke me out randomly, I can't do it. But uh, kudos for watching the whole thing and sorry you had a panic attack during it. 
yeah, a lot of real stuff in that story that I couldn't include, so check it out. Light your own up. Lisa Scarrett says, thanks Taylor for this fabulous stuff, great content, part two. Please, I like this kind of content. Hey, message received, Lisa, more to come. If you like this, comment down below for a part two. I'll gladly talk more about deadly substances. I'm the science guy now, I'm, I'm loving this. Guys, I'm Taylor McWaters. Thanks for joining us on Most Amazing Top 10, and we'll see you next time. Bye. It's a dark list, man. I'm talking about civil rights and chloroform, all at 9 a.m. Oh my God, this is a tough one.